Praise God, everyone. I am delighted to be here um, this evening uh, to share on a subject that um, the Lord spoke to me about a few um, weeks ago when I was having my own struggles um, consider when, and considering evangelism in my own life. And when I received this call to come and share with you, I thought, oh, it seems that God usually prepares his instruments beforehand uh, because I had struggles about evangelism in my own life and, and the Lord spoke to me um, in this regard and I want to just spend um, the next few minutes sharing with you and encouraging someone who is here. My name is Jess Rono. I'm a member of this church. Our topic today is when hunger hails heaven. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, I pray, O oh God, that you may reveal to us the love of the sinner and your desire to strengthen us to save the lost. I pray, O oh God, that your will for man will be made clear and our desire to save man Oh God, our zeal to save man today will be revived. I pray that you may call us to your vineyard today. And I pray that you may use me to honor and glorify that holy name. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. There are several things that God resists. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 16, that God resists double-minded people. He says those that are lukewarm, those that are neither cold nor hot, he will spew them out of his mouth. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 6, God reveals to us another category of people that he hates or rather resists. The Bible says that God resists proud people. The verse says, God giveth more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I have seen God not resisting a sinner. If anything, if you read uh, the Gospels, you can see God being constantly drawn to those people who are sinners. But the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs that there are seven things that God hates. There are things that God resists. There are things that in the sight of God, in the presence of God, he does not delight in. In the book of Habakkuk, the Bible tells us that God is of purer eyes than to behold evil. There are things that God indeed resists, but there are things that God cannot resist. And that is our subject today, when hunger hails heaven. That indeed there are things that will hail heaven. There are things that when God hears, God will pause to listen. A record is given in the book, Early Writings, page 39, paragraph 1. Ellen White speaking of the tender love of Christ to his church and to his people. And she writes and says that each time a someone is discouraged, a soul is weeping, a soul is feeling down, a soul is feeling that they, they, they can no longer continue in that narrow path. The minute they make that prayer, their attending angel rushes to heaven in lightning speed. And when they get to heaven and bring the news that, oh, you know what, Jesus? Ellen is discouraged. Peter is discouraged. All music in heaven stops. Why? Someone in God's church is discouraged. All music in heaven stops. And Christ immediately sends an angel that excels in strength to go and encourage that soul, to go and encourage you if you're disappointed, if you're discouraged. There are things that God cannot resist. While indeed there are things that God hates and there are things that God resists, there are things which when they come to the attention of God, heaven responds. In the book of Haggai, chapter 2, speaking about the coming of Christ Jesus, from verse 6, Haggai writes and says that at one point, when God was coming to this earth to reveal his will to his people, to remind them of his law, he shook the earth. God responded.
prophesied in a mighty way when he was revealing to us his character until he shook the earth. And then Haggai proceeds on to write and says, uh-uh, but he's going to do something else. He's not only going to shake the earth, he's going to shake the heavens as well. Why? He wants to evangelize on earth. He wants to win sinners. And in bringing Christ upon the earth, he says, I will not only shake the earth, I will shake the heavens. That when God desires to save sinners through the person of his son, he not only just shakes the earth, he shakes the heavens. In the book of Psalm, verse 18, I was speaking to my husband about this, and I was telling him about the story of Psalm 18. And I was telling him, have you read how dramatic the book of Psalm 18 is? That when a soul is discouraged and a soul cries out to God, we see the record of David crying out to God and saying, Oh God, look at my enemies. They have compassed around me. Hell has compassed around me. And then the Bible tells us that David makes a prayer and says, God, look upon me with pity. Look upon me with mercy. God immediately responds. The Bible tells us in Psalm 18 that God becomes angry. And we can see fire coming out of his nostrils, fire coming out of his mouth. He rushes to the scene where that soul that has been discouraged is. And you can see it's so dramatic. I was telling my husband, you know, God just comes and shua, shua, shua. You can see arrows, hailstones. God is just so dramatic in that response. Why? Because one of his children has called out to him and heaven has heard. Heaven has been shaken. Why? There is a soul that is discouraged. Now today, we have had an opportunity to hear about the power of evangelism, people's different experiences in the field. We have been encouraged today to go in and put our hands in the work, to go out and evangelize. I'm telling you, friends, everyone is usually encouraged on every evangelism Sabbath. Go out. And what has been the theme for the longest time in this church? I will go. There's a campaign that we are waiting and we are preparing for. And it seems great when we have 6,000 people seated here. I wish if all the 6,000 people would go out indeed and just bring a soul. But it sounds so easy to stand on the pulpit and tell people, you know what, people? What is the theme today? I will go. Camp meeting 2023, I will. I will go. And we are excited, shouting the mantra, shouting the theme. I will go. But many of us in here do not know where to start. How do I begin to go? Who do I speak to? How do I, 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 I don't even know the verses. Just, I know the truth about the Sabbath for me, but I don't know how to teach it to someone else. That is the soul that I want to speak to today. That God, there are certain prayers when we make, God hears. God poses and hears. When God first evangelized here, heaven was shaken. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, Paul says that if earth was shaken then and heaven was shaken in the first advent of Christ, a time is coming, now in the future, that God will shake the heavens again. He will shake the heavens when he's pouring out his word of truth and righteousness upon his church. That there are prayers that, friends, we are going to make today that are going to be heard in heaven if we desire to indeed go. I want us to consider a quick parable in the book of Luke chapter 11. Draw out a few lessons and then I will close. In the book of Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, it is a common story, um, but I want us to see a few lessons that I saw in New Light recently. I remember um, one day taking a walk in the evening and asking, my husband, sorry, it's almost the only person I speak to often, so allow me to just continue referencing them. And I asked them, why do you think the church of God is powerless today? Why do you think we make prayers and we hear very few testimonies of people being won to Christ? How come we are not engaged in evangelism as we ought to? What makes us so fearful to go and knock in our neighbor's house? Our neighbor is Muslim. And just speak to them and tell them of the love of Christ and bring them to the fold. Why is the church of God so weak in prayer? 
What is wrong with us when it comes to evangelism? We are more willing to do it here within the church, but outside we struggle. Why? And I remember God leading me to read this story of Luke chapter 11. It is about the story of a friend at midnight. I'll read from verse 5. And he said to them, this is after Christ had taught them about the Lord's prayer. Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give them. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father will he give him a stone or if he ask a fish will he for a fish give him a serpent or if he shall ask an egg will he offer him a scorpion If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that seek him? Friends, I know when we hear about the story of the friend of midnight, we think about our temporal needs. But when you read verse 13, we know the, the intention that Christ had. That the intention of Christ was not to teach about merely the temporal needs of man. But Christ wanted to teach us about our need of the Holy Spirit. And our need to ask of the Holy Spirit. Many of us are discouraged to go out because we think, oh my goodness, I don't know a verse to share with someone. The Bible tells us that the friend, first of all, he, was, he, he, he got a visitor at midnight. Many of us are surrounded by people in the midnight of this world. With the troubles of this world, you have people who have come at midnight to knock at your door. Please pray for me. I am sick and you feel powerless. You're like, I will call pastor to come and pray for you. Why? Because you think your prayers cannot be heard. When you hear people are going for evangelism somewhere, you're like, I will contribute and give you the money. Because honestly, you feel powerless. You feel like you have nothing to give. It, this friend came in the midnight of this world's earth and he went to his friend. The friend had already gone to sleep and he knocks and he asks for bread. I know many of you think that he was just asking for mere bread, but this bread represents the bread of life. I know many of you have been called to say, to, uh, have been called and they have said, I will go. But you're wondering, where will you get this bread? The bread is not in your house. I know many of you are lacking. Many of you don't have the word of God. It is not in your house. There is a place we need to go and ask for bread. If, in fact, when God gave us the great commission, Christ said, before I, I send you out, I want to tell you that the power is not with you. It is with me. So there's someone we need to go and ask for power. Are you feeling powerless to, today to pray for someone? Are you feeling powerless today to pray for your relatives who have been lost in sin? The bread is not with you. The bread is with a friend. And that friend is Jesus. He goes and knocks. And he says, give me bread. And he asks for it. And the friend pushes him away. This story does not represent, the friend who, who was being asked for does not represent Christ. It gives us a contrast of how Christ is. And like this friend, Christ will actually open the door. But we need to ask. And beyond asking, we need to do something more because seeking is greater than asking. Seeking is a step further. But beyond seeking, Christ says, you need to go a step further. You need to come and actually knock and ask for the Holy 
spirit. And he says, I will give it. I will give it. We do not have to be powerless in evangelism as a church. He will give it. As an individual, you can pray and miracles happen. Why? If you recognize your need, there are prayers we shall make that will hail heaven. Our own hunger, our own desire will hail heaven. Doors will be opened. God does not say, I want you to go because you have the Holy Spirit. I want you to go because I know you don't have the Holy Spirit, but I will give him to you if you ask me. Many of you do not have because you have not asked. I want to read a, a, a passage from Testimonies to Ministers, page 519, paragraph 2. Ellen White writes and says that God rejoices to bestow upon us grace. But listen to what she says. She says, our need is the qualification. The qualification is not that you have studied and you know all the verses about Sabbath, or you know how to make powerful prayers, or the qualification is not that you are the best in the church, you're an elder, you're a deacon. The qualification is your need. Are you needy today? Are you hungry today for the spirit? That is your qualification to ask. That is your qualification to receive from God. That is your qualification to go out and minister. Ministry of Healing, page 182, paragraph 1, saying that there is nothing apparently more helpless, yet more invisible, that that soul that is hungry, the soul that feels its nothingness, the soul that says, God, honestly, you know, I want to be a Christian, but God don't send me. That soul, Christ says, that soul is the most invincible soul if they rely on me. That is the most powerful soul. Friends, I want to tell you that heaven is on our side in every attempt to minister, in every attempt to reach out, in every attempt to pray for someone. Heaven is on your side. If you read the story of um, the lost the, 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 the lost um, um, sheep. We are told that the shepherd left the 99 to go for the one. The Bible tells us that the sympathies, the energies of the shepherd were not with the 99. I know you're thinking that God has put all his energies with the church today. The energies of God are not here today. They are with the lost outside there. The sympathies of God, his desire, his mercy, it is with your lost brother, your lost child, your lost sister. That is where you need to be laboring. It is not here, it is with the lost. Heaven is on your side when you evangelize. Why? Because Christ taxed himself, all his energies, forgot about the 99, followed the one. Are you hungry today? Are you desiring to evangelize, to be effective? The Bible says, your hunger, your hunger will be heard in heaven. I want to read our key text for this day. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 17. Isaiah 41, verse 17. The Bible says, when the poor... It is those poor in spirit, those who are saying, God, I, have, I don't have your Holy Spirit. God, I am nothing. God, I have no God, I've never memorized even a verse. Oh, God, I hear children memorizing them. I wonder, what about me? God, you know, my prayers are powerless. I've even been praying for simple things in my house. Like, God, today let it not rain because I need to, and it just rains. None of my prayers are answered. I feel poor. I feel needy. I am hungering and thirsting for something more. Isaiah 41 verse 17, the Bible says, When the poor and the needy do what? Seek water. And there is none. They are seeking for water. You are seeking for something to give to someone else. You are seeking and there is none. And their tongue faileth for thirst. You are thirsting and your tongue fails you. What does the Bible say? I, the Lord, will hear them. 
when hunger hails heaven. I, the Lord, will hear them. He says, I, the God of Israel, I will not forsake them. Are you hungering for God, hungering for his spirit? He says, I will hear you. I, myself, I will not forsake that prayer. He says, listen to this, I will open rivers in high places, places where rivers do not normally flow. I will open rivers. And fountains in the midst of valleys. God will open fountains in the places where there seems to be, if they are too low, God will open fountains. I will make the wilderness, does your life feel like a wilderness, like a desert? God says, what will I do? In that wilderness, in that desert, I will bring a pool of water. And the dry land, that dry soul of yours that feels cannot evangelize, says, call unto me. Your hunger will hail heaven. What will he do? He will bring springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness. What will he plant in the wilderness? The cedar. Let me tell you, cedars, we are told they grow in Lebanon, places where it rains. You know, they grow in the highlands of, of this country. They do, not, they, they do not flourish in deserts. But God says, I'm going to do something that does not usually happen. A cedar will grow in a desert. In the desert of your life, in the desert of your friends, in the desert of those who are lost, a cedar will grow. Places that look that will never grow anything. The shita tree will grow there. The mantle will grow there. The oil, the pine, he will set in the desert, the far tree. Trees that flourish where there is water. He says, that place where there looks like there is no water today, something great will flourish. Why? Verse 20 says, so that they may see so that the people in the world will see, and that they will know, and they will consider, and they will understand together, what? That the hand of the Lord, and that your hungry prayer held heaven, and God had it, and he has done it. Friends, I pray that God may open your eyes. And you might see the legions of angels surrounding us when we are ministering to a lost sinner. When we are praying for a lost friend. When we are saying, we are telling you, please go out and evangelize. You don't always necessarily have to knock on a door. We are asking you, rise up a little bit earlier. Go on your knees and seek the face of God for the sake of a lost sinner. When you are saying, go out and evangelize, you are not saying, go and bring up a sermon to your neighbor. No, we are saying, knock on your neighbor's door and offer a meal. And God says, your desire for the spirit as you do this work will be hard. It will shake the heavens. Friends, in the book of Revelation, when God is concluding and says, I'm about to finish this work. And today, God is indeed about to finish this work. The third angel has been sounding for a long time. We are now waiting for the fourth angels to begin to sound. And he's going to begin to sound soon. The Bible says, when the fourth angel goes out, and that is us, he says, and after these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great power. It is this last generation coming out and growing out in great power. What will this last generation do? The earth will be lightened with God's glory because of the work of evangelism that this generation seated here in today will do. Verse 4 says, in your work, something will happen. In the work of the last generation that recognizes its need, goes to God. Verse 4 tells us, people will no longer hear the voices of men. They will hear Christ himself speaking. That the heavens will shake. Why? The fourth angel did go out. You did go out. The Bible says in verse 4, And I had another voice from heaven saying, Someone will join you in the work. Someone else, not just you. The Bible says, Christ himself from heaven will speak out and will say the same thing you have been saying all along. Come out of her, my people. God himself 
will call his people. But the fourth angel must go. The fourth angel must sound. The fourth angel must hail heaven. And heaven will be shaken. And Christ will speak. He will speak and call out his own people. Friends, I want to, be, to encourage you. I know it is difficult to go. But I want to tell you, you are not going in your strength. Go to the friend and knock. Ask, seek, knock. And I want to remind you of this, that if you who is evil give good gifts to your children, you think God is like yourself. By the book of Psalm 51 says that. Some of you think, God, I am like you. God says that, eh? Thinking that I'm evil like you. No! I will give you of my spirit. I will allow pools of water in a desert land. May God bless you. Let us pray. God, you are our father. We are your children. We are needy. We are poor. We are thirsty. We are seeking, O oh God, that you may fill us. Father, you have promised in your word that you will drop righteousness from above, that you will allow pools of water to flow in our desert land. I pray, O oh God, in the wilderness of our lives, with the lack of the Holy Spirit, Father, I pray that fountains will spring up in our lives that we shall no longer be desert trees, but, Lord, as cedars, we shall flourish. Allow us, O oh God, to be instruments of truth and grace in these difficult days. In the midnight of this world, give us the strength to indeed go out and seek those that are lost. I pray for power from above. You who have said that all power has been given to you, please, Lord, give it to us. We need it today. And that your name may be glorified and that the whole earth may be lightened with your glory. Work for your children. For we have prayed, trusting and believing in Jesus' holy name. Amen.